Hello there, my name is Michael Maynard and welcome back to Gorilla Picking. Now, this is the third in the series of videos that I'm doing for Mick the Pick over in Australia. So if you have seen the first two videos, you will know that Mick has sent me over a whole lot of locks that uh, him and his crew over in Oz had had a bit of trouble picking. And the question was, okay, well, you know, can I get into them? So it turned out that the first two padlocks I opened were actually... <sighs> They were difficult locks, okay, but I found that if you followed the, the, the basic principles, if you did the basic things very well, then you could get an open. And uh, particularly the second lock, the one with the difficult keyway, I genuinely did not think that that lock was pickable. And uh, I was lucky that I had the video camera on, really, because I was just basically noodling around. And after I got it open, I was as surprised as anybody else. And I actually then had to go back and record a, an intro to that video because, you know, I, I just didn't think I was going to get the thing. However, this third lock is a different kettle of fish. And this is where, uh, well, frankly, this is where bullshit walks. It, if I can get this lock open, then I'm then I'm going to be doing well. So what is it? It is a Sergeant and Greenleaf model 833 military padlock. This is by anybody's definition one of the world's great high security padlocks. It is a beautiful lock. Now I at this point I must confess my ignorance, guys. Um, usually I do these videos because I've studied something in huge depth. I know how it works and I love um, teaching you guys about how it works, okay? Now this padlock on the other hand, um, I have seen this padlock once before in my life. So Mick had this at the AusSecCon conference in Melbourne a couple of months ago and I got the chance to look at this lock at that stage. Um, but it has not got a key. So I have got absolutely no of idea of the bitting of this. I've got no idea of the internals of it. So I, I know I've spoken to a couple of people about it, okay, and I'll tell you what they've told me in a minute. But I don't know what is, is in this lock for sure, okay? And I, I, I have never, ever, ever even stuck a pick in a Medico lock before. So I really am starting from scratch with this guys and uh, you know I'm, I'm really happy that you guys can can learn along with me really so what is it and how does it work well it is a blast proof padlock so the padlock body itself is absolutely it's just about indestructible okay so the obvious way to get into these is to pick them and so the US military when they contracted out the uh, the making of these padlocks they wanted the most secure core that they could get their hands on, and that, of course, being Americans, was a Medico. So it's a six-pin Medico. And I am reliably informed by the guys that I've consulted on this that uh, the way to pick these is that if you are picking them anti-clockwise, and I will be for a reason that I'll talk to you about in a second, uh, we need to deal with the sidebar first. So the rotational orientations of the pin uh, is what we've got to deal with first. Then once we've got those set, we can pick the conventional aspects of the pins. There might be all standards in there. There might be spools in there. The guys really didn't know. But the only thing they were able to tell me is that if we're going counterclockwise, then it's rotation first. Okay, so let's talk about the clockwise and counterclockwise thing. When these things are issued, they come with two different keys. They come with an operating key that will only turn right, it'll only turn clockwise, and that operates the padlock and opens the shackle. Now, on the other hand, it also comes with a control key, and the control key is exactly the same bitting as the operating key. Now, that's something I got wrong. I thought control and operating were two different bittings. They're not. It's the same bitting, okay, but <clears throat> it has a slightly different shaped key bow, and what that allows the key to do is rotate anti-clockwise past this giant bit of uh, what is basically warding when you get right down to it. So operating is clockwise, control is counterclockwise, and once you've picked it con to control, you can then disassemble the padlock so this top section slides off and we'll be able to get the core out. So um, that, in actual fact, folks, is about all I know about this lock. And from here on in, I am going to be learning as I go, and you're going to be learning along with me. Now, I... Oh, yeah, look, picks. 
Um, a, a lot of folks say to use the specialised Peterson pick that is, is designed for this lock, okay? And I do have one of those, and I might try it at some stage, but I'm actually going to try to pick this with the Tron first. Now, why is that, okay? Why am I going against the grain? Well, the thing about the Tron is that, as you folk know, excuse me, I use that pick first time every time in every single lock. And with the Tron, I can feel what's going on inside a lock much better than any other pick. So we're going to try that first. We're going to find out if the Tron can, in fact, rotate these pins and set them vertically. If they can, wahoo, then uh, we'll get it open with the Tron. If not, I'll try some other pick. Um, the other thing we're going to need is a tension tool that fits right down in here. So I don't know if you guys can see, but um, the actual core is about a centimetre. It's, it's about half an inch, let's say, below the level of the padlock. So I'm going to need a really, really long tension tool to get in there. And I'm not actually sure what I'm going to use just yet. So the next step really is for me to clamp this up and start playing around. Back in a second and you can watch me do it. Hang on guys. Okay guys, well this is take one and uh, we are clamped up, we're ready to go now. The tension tool I'm going to use is this Sparrows pry bar. So it is just a no more long enough to, uh, to get in there. And the pick that I'm using is a, uh, this is actually called the Gorilla Hook. This is a pick that uh, I designed and Tippany made and it's effectively a, a Tron on one end and a Lunatic on the other um, made real short and with carbon fibre in the middle so uh, Tiffany, Tiffany made this for me uh, a couple of years ago okay well what I'm doing for a start is trying to get a feel for this thing Righto guys, well uh, as you can see I have got about two or three evenings in this thing now and um, I think I'm just at the, about, uh, the point where I can pick it. So um, what I did, I have found an old Medico that I had lying around. Now I, <laughs> I, I'd actually forgotten that I had this thing, um, doesn't have a key. So what I did was shim this open, so back shimmed it open, slipped it down and have been progressively pinning it to learn how to pick one of these things. Now I had talked to uh, a couple of guys, Yukoff and Scott Works over in the US and their advice has been interesting but in the end I, I decided I was going to go my own way. And so uh, what I have done, I found that using one of these picks that is designed for the Medicos with the little notch on the end. This is the Peterson one. Uh, I, I, I discovered they weren't very good. Eh? I, I just can't use those things. So what I have wound up using is the uh, the Attila. So it doesn't have a little uh, notch on the end, but I found that I can manipulate those pins well enough with, with that as it is. And um, after that, it's just a case of top of the keyway tension and you know just just setting the pins as they need it really so without further ado let's see if we can finally get into this thing um let's get it done well let's get into this thing so uh break the pins just to prove that it's absolutely lock solid and let's get some heavy tension on there and set some of these pins now oh. I have been told that I'm unlikely to have false gates on the uh, on the pins for the sidebar, but I I really wonder about that, hey guys, because it's it's very easy to get everything into a gate here, but once you do that. Here we go, we're very definitely in some gates now. Um, yeah, e even when you got everything in a gate, hey, this thing stays resolutely locked. And I do wonder if it's a bit more complex than I've been led to believe. But, you know, we'll, we'll find out when we finally get it open. 
Okay, now I just got another little turn there. And all the pins are now feeling the same. And we've got some top pins setting. So I'm going to go out on a limb and say we've got the sidebar set. Now the worrying thing is, eh, hey, you don't find yourself, you don't get any more of a false set than you've already, than I've already got here. So I would have expected there to be security pins up the top, and that into oh hello, and we're open. Okay, well uh, might have possibly got a little bit lucky there maybe, but you don't get lucky without doing the hard yards, you know. So, uh, now what we've got to do is find out exactly what is in this beast. So let's move the camera around to about there and uh, see just what we've got. Now, I don't exactly know how to strip this thing down, so I guess we're all going to be learning as we go here. That comes off, that comes out of there, and okay, so that's the top part of the lock. We've got one of the locking balls there, and I know another one of the locking balls is, is in here. Now at this stage, we don't really need to be dealing with this, so I'm just going to put that over there and forget about it. Now the, uh, let's just bring this over here slightly. Okay, uh, now. We have got the cam there, so let's get that out of there. And now we've got the core like so. And now what I've got to do is get this core apart without embarrassing myself. Now we really don't want to lock this up and uh, we really don't want to ping uh, springs and pins all over the place either so let's be a bit careful here okay circlip is off uh, the thing's filthy eh just let me get a tissue here and give my hands a bit of a clean yuck disgusting bloody thing that it is okay now let's get a shim in there if we can. Yeah, okay, we can we can get a shim most of the way in, but I want it all the way in if I can. So let's just have another crack at that. Not quite good enough yet, I don't think. Okay, let's keep going though. Man, the tolerances in this thing are very, very, very tight. There's our sidebar starting to come loose. There we go. Okay, so we're out. Now, we did lose a spring there, which is a wee bit of a worry. So, I oh, know we didn't. Okay, we've got both springs. So, here are the two sidebar springs. Here is the sidebar itself. Now, um, it has a little ball on one end, an anti-drill ball that goes on the front, so that goes to the to the forward side. All right, now let's deal with the key pins. So we'll have one, two, three, four, 
five and six. And uh, let's just have a quick look at those eight. I, I would be very interested to know if we do have false gates on those. Yeah, we do. Okay. All right. So, as expected, false gates on the key pins. All right. Now let's see what the uh, what the top pins were. We can. Okay, one's a standard. Oh, no. Don't know what I'm looking at there. Yeah, one's actually a mushroom pin. Okay, that's interesting. Two looks to be a mushroom as well. Three's a standard. Four's a very short standard. Five's a standard. And six is a standard as well. Okay, alright, so. Um, Interesting lock. I am I'm pleased to get that one open because this is uh, the first. Let's just zoom in a bit. Um, this is the first medico I have ever picked, guys. So I'm I'm pleased to get into it. All right. Now we'll just zoom in a little bit, and I will show you the detail on these pins. Pins one and two were these little uh, mushroom things okay and very very sneaky little pins they are too um, I didn't actually feel those set as mushrooms I felt those set as standards which means that I must have had just enough tension on there to nip them over the edge of their little mushroom element without it binding too hard and um, let's just show you one of these key pins here you can see that we have got the true gate here, but also a false gate down the side here as well. I'd be interested to know if they all have that in fact. So let's just have a look at this one. Yeah, this one has it as well. So um, my guess, guys, at, without having had a look at the pins yet um, in any great detail, is that we've got false gates on all the bottom pins for the sidebar and then two mushrooms up the top as any pick features there as well so um, either way thank you very very much to uh, uh, make the pick over in Oz um, what we're going to do now is look around and see if we can find somebody who can supply us a key for this um, I don't know if there's anybody that sells Medico in New Zealand, but between Mick and myself, between here at Aussie, we should be able to find somebody, I think. So, there you have it, guys. Thanks for watching. My name's Michael Maynard. This is Gorilla Picking, and that is a uh, six-pin Medico in a Sergeant Greenleaf 833. Thanks, guys. Have fun.